What is up guys? It's Kara here and I wanted to do a not really a dietitian talk today but it's more so just a video on my opinions. Um, there is always this huge debate that we all see in social media all over the place regarding what's the best approach to competition prep. Is it following if it fits your macros? Is it following a meal plan? And I'm gonna stick with those two specifically. I know there's other methods you can use, but I'm just gonna kind of focus on those two. Um, basically, I wanna focus on those two because in the past year of my um, competing, I've competed in four shows, and I have done both if it fits your macros, and I've also done following a meal plan. So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts and feelings on physically and mentally, if any, the differences I found between following one versus the other. Um, so I did start following for my first um, two shows. Yes, my first two shows this past year, I did start with a cut using If It Fits Your Macros. I actually started out like a hundred and got something on my lip. I started out like 122 pounds, 23 pounds. It was pretty, that's like my heavy, uncomfortable, I don't want to be here type weight um, when we started prepping. And I did do If It Fits Your Macros. I ended up competing on stage at like 104 pounds. And what I thought at the time was like my best physique yet. Um, I felt pretty good during that first prep. I gotta be honest, that was my first time prepping ever using If It Fits Your Macros, and I loved it. I also did a combination with that of intermittent fasting. Um, you guys can check out intermittent fasting in other videos, but um, it wasn't that it was an easy prep for me, but to have to cut and lose that much weight, like I lost like 18 pounds. That's pretty substantial for someone as small as me, someone as petite as myself. I'm only five foot two. Um, to lose weight like that, even when I'm on my heavier end, it takes a lot of grinding, you guys. Um, so I did If It Fits Your Macros, and I felt, unless a shredded heezy can chime in that I did, I'm speaking incorrectly, but I felt fairly good during the majority of that prep. Um, we had to cut, we had to get things low, and I worked with Mark during that time, and I, he didn't actually tell, like, tell me how to eat or what to choose. That was totally up to me. Um, and I did find with that, sometimes I was not making the best choices with If It Fits Your Macros. Like I definitely wasn't always choosing the most like nutrient dense, food, nutrient dense foods. You know what I'm saying? Like I would still fit in a Quest Bar, which as your macros get cut pretty low, um, you'll find isn't the best choice to soak up like that many carbs and fat on a bar that doesn't necessarily fill you up and provide you with like as much nutrition as say a whole piece of lean protein with veggies and you know what I'm trying to say here. So it was a good learning process for me throughout that prep. Um, but I did feel like I looked pretty great on like, I don't want to say on stage because I don't think I looked as great on stage as I did like three days out. Nonetheless, loved if it fits your macros. Did it again for my second prep, which Mark prepped me for half, and then as most of you guys know by now, he had to leave for a TV show, American Grit. So I had to take over and finish coaching myself, which actually I did a fairly good job at. Um, not that I can't coach, clearly I can, I have a uh, coaching business, but I like having a second set of eyes. But Jason and myself went on a vacation. I also went on another trip and followed If It Fits Your Macros while prepping. Oh my God, shock. And it actually, again, wasn't that difficult to do. And I felt like during that second prep, it was hard. Like, don't get me wrong, prep in general, I think regardless of what style you choose to use to get your, your results, it's gonna be exhausting. It should be exhausting, it should be tiring. Choosing if it fits your macros over a meal plan isn't like gonna mean that all of a sudden you're gonna feel amazing all the time. And it doesn't work like that. I still felt exhausted, tired, had to grind real hard. Um, but again, felt like I saw really good results, nothing different. And then coming into the springtime, I worked with Danica. We did If It Fits Your Macros for a while. And then I kind of felt like I wasn't getting the results I wanted. 
but it wasn't her issue, it wasn't really my issue, it was just kind of what was going on at the time. And we did switch to a meal plan style where we had some variety in it, and then we switched to a set meal plan for a good chunk of time because I ended up doing two back-to-back -back shows with her. So I did a set meal plan where I legit, for the most part, ate like the same five meals every single day for about um, six to eight weeks, I would say. It was probably a solid two months max. I think it was two months max. Um, I had major concerns with that that I expressed with her from the beginning that in my past competitions, I would do horrible on meal plans. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would do them and get to where I needed to get first stage, but it wasn't in a good way. Like I wouldn't follow it 100%, so I'd like make my own substitutions because I could not bear to think that I couldn't ever make my own decision on something different to eat. So if I did do that, then I would feel like I needed to restrict the next day or say I ate a protein bar that wasn't on the plan, then I'd feel like I had to like do extra cardio the next day. And that's kind of how I used to deal with it with prepping with a meal plan. It really wasn't healthy. Um, it maintained me very lean regardless of not following the meal plan 100% because I was always kind of making up for it with either restricting or over-exercising, which is kind of my past restriction and over-exercising. And it's something that I is not important to me to do anymore in a nutshell at this stage of my life. And um, so I had a lot of reservations about going into the meal plan, but come to find out, I followed that shit like 110%. You know, I was, I did it. I just stuck with it and I knew this is what I needed to do and I started seeing results. And as soon as you start seeing results, it makes it that much easier to stay motivated and stay on plan, right? So I did that. Um, in terms of those two shows where I followed the meal plan, did I look better than if it fits your macros? <sighs> I don't know, it's really hard for me to say, and reason being is a lot of things changed between all four shows. My hair color changed, my suit changed, my suit color changed, the cut of the suit changed, um, my tan color looked different at each and every show, so it gets tough to kind of assess at what point you looked your best. I think certain parts of my body looked better the first show I did last August, um, my MPC show that I placed eighth in, which was the worst placing I've ever received in a competition. But I look back at those photos and I think, man, that looked good. Like everything looked good. But then when I look at my spring shows that I did with Danica, I feel like that's the best my hamstrings have ever come in. You know, with minimal needing to bend and pop in the booty in order to see my hams. So in terms of weight on the scale, it's interesting. I was pretty much the same weight on the scale for all four shows, doing if it fits your macros, choosing whatever the heck I wanted to choose, which you guys can go back to my summer bikini prep. And um, I was eating like, you know, egg beaters and bacon, and I had dairy products, oh, and I had what I wanted. I made it fit, and um, I looked tight. I looked good at my show, regardless of the placing. And actually, my abs looked better at that show versus following a meal plan, but I feel like that is, and if we show pictures throughout this video, you may see that first as a difference in my abdomen, but that's more, I believe that was more related to my training and my lack of training in my abs. I focused heavily on abs going into my first show, especially in my off season. And that really helped me bring those in going into my competition that first show. And then I kind of started slacking a little bit in the ab department. So I feel like that's not necessarily reflective of the diet. So I know a lot of people say abs are made in the kitchen, but I really feel like abs are made in the off season with heavy weights and you have to do them consistently. That is how they're made. But genetically, you have to work with what you got. I digress. So what I'm saying is um, things look different at different stages of time using both different dietary approaches. So physically, I can see little different things in each of my stage presents, but nothing crucial where I would say, for sure, going into my WMBF Pro Show, I got to do the If It Fits Your Macros because that's what gave me my best physique. 
And on the other side of things, I would not say I have to do the meal plan because look at the drastic change in my body. I, I don't know what you guys see. I personally don't see that drastic of a difference in my body. And again, a lot of what you see in your body is going to be related to your training as well. And my training was a little bit different throughout preps. So then, so I've kind of talked about the physical aspect. Let me talk about the mental aspect, which I find is more crucial when deciding how you're going to choose to um, diet for your show, essentially. I think that is something you need to think about. And because I do believe, and I know there's some schools of thought out there that people say, aha, you can't place well at a show using if it fits your macros. You're never going to turn pro. And people have proven that wrong time and time again. So I do not believe that. Um, but one thing I will say is the mental aspect of doing if it fits your macros versus meal planning. This is something that I learned and I didn't learn it until after I won my pro card and I've been in my reverse period. Um, this is going to be something that you need to assess you and your personality and your relationship with food. Okay, for me, I didn't really think about any of that. I was going into um, my spring show series where my goal was to turn pro. I, ha I was so friggin close in the fall that it didn't, I, I wasn't thinking about aftermath. I was thinking about what does it take to get me there? What do I need to do? If a meal plan is what I need to do to see results, by golly, let's do this meal plan. I will do it. I'll stick to it 100%. And I did. And I actually did turn pro. I don't think it's reflective of my meal plan, though. Um, but what I will say, will ha what happened to me personally is struggling mentally post-show, going from eating literally identical foods every single day. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I did. I had no issues with my foods. Like me and Danica, like we were in a good place. Like the food she was giving me, I was like, girl, I'm good. I got this. I love this. I, I'm good. And it made it, it made it very simple for me in terms of um, not having to make a selection about what to eat to fit my macros. It took that component away, which at the time was a blessing because I felt like I don't want to make one more damn decision. I've, I've got enough to worry about. I don't want to have to figure out how it fits my macros. I just want to eat and be done. It's kind of how I felt. Um, so you can see in a way that's great when you're prepping because you're stressed out, you have tons to do, right? But for me, where I found it impacted me is when I was done prep. And when it was time to just be Kara and live life and, and still live a fit life, because that's what I do, right? Kara Corey fit life. Um, but kind of having to learn how to get back in tune with my body and to figure out, well, what do I eat now? What is okay? What's not okay? What's the best for me? And again, like I mentioned, you have to, every personality is different. So don't listen to this like everyone's going to react like I do because I don't expect people to, but I'm just sharing my experience. And for me, it made it really hard post-show if I was choosing anything other than what was on my meal plan um, to not feel bad about it and not feel like it was wrong. It was a bad choice. It wasn't on my meal plan, so... You know, if I'm if I'm gonna have something off my meal plan, I might as well like have whatever I want and not worry about it. It kind of turns into that mentality for me where it was like, you know how certain diets exclude fruit because fruit's so high in sugar, right? It's terrible for you. Um, so, you know, if you're gonna have an apple and it's gonna be a cheat, you might as well go have some donuts, right? because that's the same. And I know it sounds ridiculous because I'm sitting here as a registered dietitian and clearly it's not a lack of education. To me, it's not a lack of discipline. I have discipline. I've shown it time and time again. I've been a competitor for five years. It's more about this, this mental shift that changed with me. And unfortunately, I didn't realize it till it was too late, you guys. It was too late when I realized it and I had already packed on some post-show weight. Um, and, and not only that, but as you guys could tell from my vlogs, I felt fairly depressed post-show, and I don't believe it was even necessarily, it had to do with a lot of things going from the post-show high to now what do I do, but I was just really confused about food. I have never been so confused about food in my life before, and that in itself made me feel bad about myself. Why can't I do this? Why is this so hard? Um, 
it just it made me not want to do the reverse diet because I didn't want to do the meal plan so we tried doing macros and such like that but it even still was hard for me because I just felt like no matter what I chose it wasn't right and that seems so so messed up right and and it's, it's still a work in progress for me. I'm in a good place now, but it's well after my show, and it took me a long time to get here. And I wish, you know, I wish I didn't have to get to this point. I wish I didn't have to, to work through those struggles. I wish I didn't gain the weight I gained post-show because that was not my plan by any means. Um, so it was very, very challenging. So as I sat there and was trying to figure out why, why am I going through this? Why am I struggling? Why can't I just have like a perfect day of eating? Why can't I just like, why can't I restrict? Why can't I just eat 40 carbs and make the weight drop off of me again? You know, and I just kept trying to challenge myself with, okay, what is, what's a healthy mindset right now, Kara, versus what's this like competition ideal you're trying to achieve that isn't healthy? Let's get away from that unhealthy mindset. And with that, I just did have to embrace I was going to be a little bit heavier right now in order to kind of wrap my brain back around healthy eating and what's best for my body and making good food choices. And it sounds, it sounds nuts. I'm going to say it again. It sounds nuts saying that when I'm a registered dietitian and I sit here and I coach people and I help people, but you know, I'm okay with disclosing that because you know, I struggled and I'm not going to sit here and lie about it or hide from it. And I can't blame the meal plan. I don't want you guys to take this video as me blaming a meal plan. My coach was excellent. Um, I, she's phenomenal. It, the only person I can blame if blame needs to be placed. And why does blame even need to be placed, right? It really doesn't. There, <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. Nothing bad happened. You know what I mean? It's a little... It's a little crazy that I'm, I make such a big deal out of these things, right? But they are a big deal because people really suffer post-show, and this was the worst I suffered, which is why I do make these videos. Um, but I can't blame the meal plan. I, do, I don't blame myself, but I am first and foremost responsible, you know? And for me, this was a huge learning curve post-show, something I really had never sat and learned about myself before and really assessed why I was struggling, why I was feeling this way, why I was having urges to binge. Um, you know, there, all these things kind of came after it. And I do attribute it to following a meal plan 100%. And part of my perspective following this meal plan 100% was, Kara, just follow it. Follow it 100% and then post-show you go back to normal eating. Sounds so simple. It's so challenging. So I just caution people because you have to really assess your relationship with food and not let it get lost in the process of competing. And, and I lost that with the meal planning. Um, I really, really did. And it's not to say I didn't, like, after other competitions, kind of like eat what I wanted a little bit, but I never struggled as much as with feeling like confused and depressed and like not wanting to eat healthy and just weird stuff, you guys. It just really, it really did throw me for a loop. And I've learned now that it is not something that I probably would utilize again, at least not as strictly where I'm following the same exact meals every single day. Um, it did help me in terms of like, knowing these are the foods you eat, you prep the same foods every day, you don't have to think twice about it. Um, I also learned with if it fits your macros, I was a lazy if it fits your macro person. Like I would just fill it with a Quest Bar, a protein shake, you know, real quick things. And not that those are bad things. And unfortunately, that's what I kind of got ingrained in me. Um, they're not bad things. But you know, I kind of want to plan to prep for my next show when I do, whenever that happens, you know, doing if it fits your macros, but making sure I'm mindful and in including healthy foods and not, not eating any vegetables, you know? It's hard when you're on low carb to be like, hmm, the smart choice is to eat all vegetables today because I know that's what's voluminous, micronutrient dense, that's gonna fill me up. Or, you know, I could just have myself a big ass bowl of oatmeal and a Quest Bar and that shit tastes so much better. You know, and that's kind of where I got lazy. But now that I've done both, you know, I've done it all this past year, I've really learned a lot about what I think works best for me. 
And I do feel like physically I looked good at all my shows with no dramatic differences. Um, you know, it's, I think that was more related to training and consistent training, training in my off season, more related to the exercise plan. So, you know, I don't know. It's, it's really important for you guys to think about your relationship with food. I strongly suggest you assess your relationship with food and, and think about where you're going to be post-show. And as much as I stress that in my videos for all of you, it's something I didn't do for myself because I was just focused on, on my pro card. And I wasn't really worrying about the reverse diet. I wasn't really thinking about it. I wasn't really thinking about how I'd feel eating these same foods I've already ate for two months post-show. And, you know, those are things you need to think about. Think about the current plan you're on and what you're going to need to do or what you plan on doing post-show. If post-show, you plan on just switching to intuitive eating because you think that's what will be best for your sanity. You think that's what will prevent binging, even though you're okay with gaining a few pounds. Like, just figure out what your plan is post-show and be okay with it. You know, I do believe that it's not one set way post-show either. You don't have to do some per, like perfect reverse diet post-show. I don't necessarily think that's best for your sanity. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't. Um, is it best if you wanna maintain this lean physique, capitalize on your metabolism as long as possible and not have any damage to your body per se? Yeah, probably. Um, but you just kind of have to weigh what's going to be important to you post-show, what's going on in your life post-show, you know, and really and really use some of that information to help guide you with what you're doing throughout prep. Don't just go through prep with blinders on for what you need to get to stage day. I'm here to tell you, don't do that, okay? You need to figure out what life will be like afterwards and kind of incorporate that into what's going to work best. Prep isn't a lifestyle, okay? It's not. I've tried to show a way to do it as balanced as possible through my past preps, but it's not maintainable for the most part. It's restrictive, it's hard, and it's exhausting. And the aftermath post-show can be extremely exhausting, and you don't want to have to rely on just well, I'll just sign up for another show. I'll just, you know, keep having that show date in mind. I'll stay lean, I'll stay cut. I won't have to worry about it. I'll just stay prepping. At some point, you're gonna have to stop prepping and you're gonna have to live life. So figure out what approach works best for you in order to get your competition goals, but to also live your life and be happy with yourself post-competition. It's not an easy thing to do, you guys. So that's my experience with that. And um, yeah, I think I've rambled long enough and <laughs> hopefully some of that was helpful. Some of it made sense. Um, as always, you know, it's a very serious topic. It really, really is. And whether you've competed or not, I'm sure some of you that have experienced different styles of dieting through your weight loss journey, through your weight gain journey, and you know, different things help us. And that's why there are dietitians and, and people to help individualize plans because we're not all cookie cutter. There isn't one right way to do something. There isn't one wrong way. What I'm saying works for me in this video doesn't have to be the right way for you. You don't have to agree me agree with me. The total opposite could be what works best for you. And that's cool. That's quite all right. It's about recognizing what works best for you at all stages of life and finding a way to be able to do it so that you can love your body at all stages of life. So that's it guys. We're going to end this video here. I really hope you found it helpful. Please share it with others as always. Comment below. I love the chat that you guys, the community that we kind of have below in the comment section, comments section. So please comment below and we will see you in the next one.